So we're back, and uh, the New York Times uh, at uh, 12.30 today, 12.30 uh, p.m., uh, reported that Joe Biden's lead in Nevada widened to about 12,000 votes after newly tabulated votes uh, were reported in Clark County. Uh, so at that time, uh, Biden was up by um, uh, almost one percentage point. And so Nevada, if Arizona holds or if, if Arizona doesn't and Pennsylvania comes through, uh, that we could be looking at the 46th president. And we, we will know, I think, by, uh, by the round this time tomorrow, uh, one way or another. But it's, um, there's not as much stuff for people uh, who are center to the left to do under a, a Trump administration when it comes to sort of like surgical tactics and personnel. In fact, there's very little other than maybe try and get Nancy Pelosi or whoever is the House leader to hold some hearings. But in the uh, event that Joe Biden is president, let's talk about personnel in the, uh, the, the Biden administration. Mitch McConnell, and this is going to come as a shock, I'm sure, to you, Jeff, turns out he's not looking forward to uh, really collaborating with Joe Biden. He is already announcing that he is uh, going to prevent Joe Biden from putting in people who Mitch McConnell feels is uh, are are too much to the left of where Mitch McConnell wants them. So President McConnell has already put down the marker. What do people who uh, disagree with Mitch McConnell having a say over who's in Joe Biden's cabinet um, do at this point? And what I mean, what do we do for progressives, leftists who want to influence this uh, this uh, administration? So, I mean, the job of the left, I think, is to give a sense of spine to the Biden administration. They have options. They need not panic. They need not bend the knee to Mitch McConnell. They very much should not. They would be selling out the majority of Americans who voted for Joe Biden. He won a majority. That is relatively uncommon. Bill Clinton never won a majority. He is the majority choice, as we were discussing on the majority report, and he needs to govern like that. So what does that mean? There are two principal things that means. One is getting to know, learn, and love the Vacancies Act. The Vacancies Act is the mechanism by which a president governs in the absence of, absence of confirmed officials. Now, there is always going to be absences. Like when you take over on January 20th, 2021, there are a thousand Senate confirmed jobs in the government and the odds that you have filled more than 10 or 12 of them are extremely profoundly low. So you always have to govern by the Vacancies Act. And you should always start with an assumption that you're going to staff out your administration by the Vacancies Act. We very much urge President-elect Biden, and I'll even go further and say, I mean, based off what I was saying, I'm comfortable calling him that. He needs to act like that. He needs to develop his team, put them in place as, uh, uh, as acting X and principal deputy acting as X. There's a whole legal lingo Keep in mind, this has been done by President's time ad in memoriam uh, using the Vacancies Act. It's many, many decades. Their predecessor law goes back to the 19th century. So and, and there we is. Should, and we should say that throughout the Trump presidency, the Republicans have controlled the Senate. And I, I, I mean, you tell me, how many is there any? Do we have any confirmed <laughs> members of, of of Trump's cabinet? I mean, it seems to me like at least half of our cabinet secretaries are acting cabinet secretaries. Yes, and that's been true despite having a Senate majority, as you said. And so, like, if you can't get a Republican confirmed by Mitch McConnell's Senate, like, right. think about the caliber of people we are discussing here. Right. Uh, but, it's like low level pond scum. Uh, but, but I mean, if, if Trump can do it, then certainly Joe Biden yeah. can do it because he's got, I mean, the, the justification is Mitch McConnell's complete obstructionist. Absolutely. And it goes beyond that. To the extent to which there's ever been pushback on Trump, it's mostly because Trump's lawyers are so dumb and the statute is complicated enough. It's not like rocket science complicated, but it's complicated enough that political hacks have sometimes messed it up. But all those mistakes have been unforced errors by Trump. Uh, there are more than enough talented progressive lawyers who would be happy to staff uh, Joe Biden on an aggressive Vacancies Act strategy. He should pursue that. The other thing to keep in mind is that uh, 
with the cooperation of the House of Representatives, uh, a President Biden could adjourn Congress for more than two weeks and then under a recent Supreme Court precedent, make recess appointments. Um, that's also an effort that has historical um, analogies. There are even, uh, William Brennan started on the US Supreme Court via a recess appointment under Dwight D. Eisenhower. Don't you need the Senate to recess or could the House recess on behalf of the Senate? Um, they can disagree and the president gets to be tiebreaker. It is uh, no. one of those things that we actually have more fail safes built into the system and it's a break glass moment. Merrick Garland, the outcome of Merrick Garland should inform how Democrats proceed in the future. Mitch McConnell respects no norms, no decency. He is entirely committed to destabilizing this country. Nothing he does has legitimacy and therefore anything that is lawful should be fair game by Biden in his effort to effectuate the will of the majority of Americans. There is no tactic that is lawful that is unacceptable for Biden if he is helping him accomplish the goals for which he was elected. And so, yeah, aggressive adjournment, uh, recourse to the Vacancies Act on a level even greater than that um, done under Donald Trump, do it lawfully. I am in favor of rule of law, but I am not in favor of allowing Mitch McConnell to become co-president because the wildly undemocratic Senate has reinstalled him as majority leader. Uh, all right, we just have a, a minute or two left, but so, uh, okay. So uh, our, our audience has heard uh, the words administrative, uh, uh, you know, uh, act and what, uh, so what do we do? Like, I mean, how does, how does Joe Biden get the message that we know about this, um, uh, the, these acts and that we know about the powers he has and we want him to use them and not use that as an excuse of having to put in some, you know, Republican or former Republican as, I don't know, Treasury Secretary, because my hands are tied because of, uh, of, of uh, Mitch McConnell. I mean, what, like, how does that, how do we put this into action, this knowledge? Sure. So we have the Revolving uh, Door Project. We are going to be putting out web tools. Uh, we're going to be working with our allies at Demand Progress and a bunch of environmental groups to put together a website called No Corporate Cabinet. We're going to be putting out tools and we're going to be conducting um, all sorts of educational events with allied organizations and activists to let them know about the series of robust tools that a president has uh, in their executive branch authority and to make appointments um, and to overcome Mitch McConnell. There are a lot of tools. We are going to try to make sure that progressive groups with vast membership are aware of these tools and can activate their membership to make sure that the Biden administration is aware that they are aware. And I also think like calling your members of Congress is gonna be really important. Even if you live in a blue area in some ways, all of a sudden, you're, you're not that important in an election season. And right after an election season, you become even more important because you have a member of Congress. You want your member of Congress to hear that you are urging them to make sure Biden show, demonstrates spine. I do think Biden will be responsive to uh, members of the Congressional Democratic Caucus, both left and right. And we need the lefty members to speak up as loud as possible. Well, uh, Jeff, we're going to put a, um, uh, a link to the Revolving Door Project at Majority.fm. When you know, those other sites are up, we're going to let our audience uh, know about it because, uh, and I imagine it's going to happen soon. Uh, yeah. Knock on wood, we shall see. But Jeff Hauser, uh, Revolving Door Project, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here.